Welcome back to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we are going to be talking everything tire choice. Okay, so a quick disclaimer. We are Maxxis athletes. Maxxis is a sponsor of this channel. They are awesome. We will be using Maxxis tires as examples in this video. However, we are going to be talking big overarching principles of kind of how tires work and why tires, why tires are tires? Why tires tire? <laughs> so regardless of what brand of tires you prefer, our goal with this video is to give you the knowledge to look at any tire made by any company without any labels on it and have a decent idea of where that tire will excel. So why should you even care about tire choice? Why not just keep running the tires that came on your bike for four years? The big reasons are safety, speed, and comfort. So safety, of course, the type of tire that you have is going to affect the traction that you have and traction's everything in mountain bike. If you don't have traction, you're crashing. And the second element is speed. And I don't just mean speed for racing. You should care about this, whether you are a racer or not. The rolling speed of your tire determines how you're gonna flow on the trail, whether you're gonna be able to carry the speed for the little jumps. And it also affects how much fun you're going to have. We often see riders pushing really heavy, beefy tires up the hill. And while that may give them confidence in specific situations going downhill, it may just make mountain biking kind of discouraging and not fun because it's just too much tire. I'd say so many people are this overtired. This is really common. I mean, some people are aware that they're doing that. That's true. <laughs> and they're doing that for reasons that we're going to discuss later. And then some people are on the bike that say their spouse put them on and was like, you need this for going downhill and maybe they don't. Good point. You also wanna be comfortable on your bike and the type of tire that you have on your bike affects the vibration, damping, how much flex you get over rocks. And we're gonna talk a lot more about why that is the case, but this is the reason you don't wanna run downhill tires on your daily driver trail bike when you're just out for having fun. In this video, we're gonna talk about the three components of tires, the casing and bead, the tread, and the compound. And then we are gonna give you some real life examples of why we choose certain tires for certain events. First of all, the bead of your tire, I'm sure everyone has probably heard of this term, but it is this part around here. And there are two types of beads that we see in modern mountain bike tires. We have wire bead. We don't actually have any wire beads to show you. Wire beads are typically for super, super strong downhill tires. They're also a little bit cheaper to manufacture, so you might see these on commuter bikes. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more wire bead tires on e-bikes as e-bikes become more popular because wire bead tires are much, much stronger. However, they are also much heavier. So on an e-bike, you don't care, but on a modern mountain bike, almost all of us are running foldable tires. So that's the other type of bead is foldable. And evidently, I am surrounded by foldable tires because wire beads don't fold, so <laughs> that's your clue. If you've bought a tire like this, you have bought a foldable <laughs> bead tire. So the casing is what is between the beads underneath the rubber. So your bead and your casing are essentially the skeleton of your tire, and then that rubber gets put on top of it, and then it gets put in a mold, and the tread appears. Magically. Magically. Mackie and I had the opportunity to go to a tire factory in Bangkok in 2015. Super cool experience. I don't know how I thought tires were made before, but it wasn't like that. So maybe I blew someone else's mind there too. Okay, so the casing is here. Will you show over there? So this is just a, a gravel tire. So it's a much thinner casing, but you can actually see the threads. So basically it's like a layer of fabric coated in rubber. So tire casings use TPI. So thread count essentially like a sheet, but threads per inch in this case to basically tell you how, well, to tell you how many threads are in there, which tells you how strong the tire is. I will fully admit that I had this backwards until about a year and a half ago. I always just assumed that higher thread count meant more threads, so therefore more stronger. Incorrect, a higher thread count is actually going to be a less strong casing 
because while there are more threads, each thread is thinner and there's less room for the rubber to get between the threads in a higher thread count. So as you can see, this Aspen is 120 TPI. So Maxis typically has 60 or 120 P TPI. We are not done with casing there. You might be like, okay, cool, I get that, we're good. Not quite. There's also single and dual ply casings and that just means how many fabric layers there are. If you have a tire from Maxis that is the EXO or XO casing, that is a single ply casing. The XO Plus, which got over here, is the single ply with a butyl insert. And that is mostly that insert is around the bead, correct? Yeah, or so there's plastic butyl uh, insert here and it provides additional protection. So if you do pinch the tire so that it hits the rim, it will provide a little protection for both the rim and the tire to decrease the likelihood of pinch flatting. The XO Plus is only a 60 TPI. So that's why it doesn't have the TPI written anywhere on it. Whereas the XO comes in a, both a 120 and a 60. If you're like, why would I ever want a 120 if it's lightweight? That's definitely a cross country tire. It's definitely more towards a race tire. I mean, we we actually have had, I would say amazingly good luck with 120 TPI tires, but you are running a higher risk of flats with a 120 TPI tire than you are with the 60 TPI, than you are with an XO Plus, which is the 60 TPI with the insert along the sidewall. So moving into the dual ply casings. Double Down is Maxxis's dual ply enduro trail casing. So it is two layers of 120 TPI. In fact, it even says that two by 120 TPI right there. Whereas a full on downhill tire, I think Maxxis calls it the DH casing, is dual ply as well, but is two layers of the 60 TPI. So you can imagine that two layers of 120 is going to be lighter than two layers of 60. So regardless of the brand, if you are looking to understand the weight and the flat protection of a tire, you're gonna wanna look for thread count. You're gonna wanna look on the tire manufacturer's website and figure out what their levels of casing are, like what's single ply, what's dual ply, what has an insert, etc. The other thing to note with Double Down is because they're 120, you get a more supple ride. So you get sure. better trail feedback. Yeah, so the more threads, the more, what's that, what's the word? Flexible. The more flexing you can get, basically. So that can, it has a really nice ride feel. The stiffer the casing you get, you do lose a little bit of that suppleness. Again, it's always a trade-off for flat protection versus suppleness versus, yes, weight. It also has a butyl insert, but it has a slightly bigger butyl insert. Than the XO Plus. Than the XO Plus. So basically, no insert, 60 or 120, always 60 with a butyl insert, two by 120 with a bigger butyl insert, and then the DH, which we don't have any of, our bigger butyl insert, two by 60. I think I said all that right. Yeah. So hopefully now you are getting the picture of why there are so there's so much information on the tires that you want to buy. A lot of people want to, you know, they just want to get an acid guide. They don't want to have to think about all these other things. But once you kind of understand the principles behind it, it makes it a lot easier to understand what you're getting. I would also say that is the perfect segue into the next section. Yes, let's talk about tread. The next major thing we're going to talk about is the tread pattern. And I think this is what people think of when they think of different tires is they're thinking about the tread. And that's partially because of how tire companies name tires. The name is the tread. So any tire called an Asagai is going to have this tread pattern. Ditto any tire called a Forecaster is going to have this tread pattern, unless it's old, because they did they do change it sometimes, so That's true. don't at me. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be like, I have a forecaster from 2018, <laughs> and it's totally different. So the tread pattern is exactly what it sounds like. It's the tread that your tires make when you roll through dirt or water. We are not tire designers. There are some really smart people out there who decide the exact spacing and the exact size and all of that. We're not gonna get into that today because I'll probably say something that's wrong and make everyone <laughs> angry, but I do think it's very possible for anyone to have sort of have a basic enough understanding of tread pattern that you can look at a tire and be like, 
Okay, I, I know what that's for, more or less. For the purpose of simplicity, we are going to compare two very different tires. We're gonna look at the tread patterns of the Asagai in the Aspen. So the Asagai is an enduro or downhill tire. This is what we used as a front tire in our most recent enduro race. It is a great tire. The Aspen is a cross country tire. It is also a great tire. However, if you take an Aspen somewhere where you'd want an Asagai or vice versa, it's not a great tire anymore. So what you're saying is never take an Aspen to an Asagai fight? <laughs> The first thing we are going to look at is the knobs, and there are a couple different elements to what is going on with the knobs. There's the height of the knobs, the spacing between the knobs, and just the general size of the knobs. This one's a big knob. <laughs> big knob energy. <laughs> the height of the knob affects how well these knobs dig into the surface that you are riding on. So this is where your braking traction comes from, your cornering traction. As you can tell, you're gonna have to think about your corners a little bit differently if you're running Aspens than you are with an Asagai. So, cause you are not, you don't have these big side knobs that are going to dig into the dirt as you corner. Your braking traction, assuming you're braking when you're going a straight line, which you should be, cause you should not be braking in your corners, comes from these center knobs. So the higher the center knob, the better braking traction you are going to have. Because basically like dirt is packing up against right. the edge of the, like the square edge of the knob. Okay, so you might be thinking if tall knobs, <laughs> if tall knobs give you better traction and better cornering, why don't we just make them taller and taller? For example, see these are definitely taller than the knobs on the Asagai. This is the Maxxis Shorty. That can be great if it is super muddy. If it's not very thick mud all the time, you might get this kind of squirrely feeling because those knobs can actually bend and flex which is not always the best feeling, especially if you're you know, riding some wet rock features or get on something hard pack. Yeah, if you've so. got variable conditions, like you're going in mud, but then there's a dry section because, or there's a hard section because it's either rock or it's dry. These, because they're taller and like smaller, if you think about a stiletto, a stiletto heel made of rubber. Tell me about stilettos, Maggie. I don't know. I'm just imagining. Imagine a stiletto heel made out of rubber. I don't think it's possible. Exactly. I also don't wear stilettos because I would be eight feet tall. So on the flip side of that, the bigger center knobs will not roll as well as smaller, lower profile center knobs like these on the Aspen. So that's why the Aspen is considered such a fast rolling tire is you don't have these big knobs. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I knew nothing else about these tires, if there were no labels, there were no names, I could look at these and I could say, this is gonna be really good if I need to brake hard on steep trails. This is gonna be not so good at that. If I'm doing a really long climb on hard pack, I want this tire, not this tire. The next piece here is the space between the knobs. Knob spacing affects how well your tire clears mud. Shorty Cameo, which is essentially a mud tire, and you can tell why it's a mud tire, and that there is a lot more space. There's a whole finger width in between these knobs where there's only a side finger width between these knobs. You're gonna have fairly decent brake and traction with both of these. This one's gonna roll even not as good as that one. Knob height, we talked about, what's the other? Oh, just the general size. Yeah, so that's like the surface area of the knob. More surface area gives you more traction on hard pack surfaces. So like the Asagai is gonna grip well on rocks. Wide spacing and less surface area, it can like get around things and like push through the mud. Whereas bigger surface area, it's gonna have better traction on harder surfaces. Right, so your rocks, you're gonna do perhaps a little bit better with an Asagai than you are going to with the Shorty. However, if it's super muddy in between your rocks and roots, you may be happier with the Shorty. It does have other uses other than mud. Like if you ride somewhere with thick loam, first of all, lucky you, lucky you. <laughs> that's awesome. This is a great tire for that. I think the same would be true for somewhere with like a lot of really thick, loose gravel. It depends a little bit what the rest of the terrain is like. Yeah. Um, I think that's why so many people do choose to go with something like an Asagai in more of the enduro range or the Forecaster more in the trail range is because these are very 
versatile, like mixed terrain tires. And most of us don't just ride one type of dirt all day. And most of us also don't have mechanics to like swap our tires the moment the terrain changes or something. The Maxxis Wet Scream is a full on mud tire. The Shorty is a, is a tire for when you have loose conditions, whether that's thick mud, you, you want to bite in and you yeah, don't have a lot of hard pack where... or hard rock. And then the Asagai is a good mixed terrain tire because as you can see, these knobs are a little bigger and a little less tall than the Shorty. So they're not going to be squirmy if you're on hard pack, rock rolls, rock garden, that kind of situation. But there's still a decent amount of spacing. So you're not going to feel bad on a tire like this if you are in sort of medium level mud conditions, like it's gonna feel great on loam or loose rock as well. We have more aspects of tread. It's not all about the knob, it's how you use it. <laughs> and how your siping is. So siping is the term for these little sipes, otherwise known as cuts or grooves. And essentially what they're doing here, again, I am not a tire designer. I'm not gonna pretend to know why they put three here and one there. Like <laughs> I haven't the foggiest, but basically a tire with a fair bit of siping, like that is there to improve the grip that you're getting because you just have more different surface areas to catch on different things, essentially. And also things will flex differently. Like mm, yeah. this is gonna flex into that sipe or into that, tr that cut on both of these sides, well, you're gonna get a little bit better traction from kind of a cornering perspective because of that flexing. And then if you look at these, the triple, like this could be one knob, mm -hmm. but because there are three of them, you're getting additional braking surfaces. So you're, it's gonna help with the braking just a little bit more. The next two things we're gonna talk about have to do with how well the tire rolls and that's your ramping and then the continuous center line. Let's just look at the ramping in this tire. Like you can tell by looking at this tire which way is supposed to be facing forward this way. Yep. Yeah, because it's ramped like this, right? So if, cause if you're braking, you wanna be digging in. If you're rolling, you wanna have the ramp. So your front edges are generally gonna be ramped and your back edges, which are your braking edges, are gonna be square. That's what I was trying to say. And you can see that is accentuated even more in something like an XC tire, which is going to be faster rolling. Ramped, square. And then the continuous center line, I'm not sure what you meant by that bullet point. So basically, if you look at the, the distance between the knobs of the center tread, that's going to tell you how well it rolls. So like this has a pretty continuous center line of tread. Well, that's the, the part of the tire that you're on when you're rolling in a straight line. So it's gonna roll yeah. well. This one, fairly continuous, but because the knobs are higher, it's not gonna work as well. This one, not so continuous. Not like, gonna roll great. It's not gonna roll real well. You're gonna have better traction in the wet, but you're not gonna roll as well. This is actually a really good example of everything we've just been talking about. This is the Maxxis Severe. So the first thing that kind of jumps out at you is these knobs are not very tall. So that is telling me this is an XC tire. This is not a downhill tire. This is not an enduro tire. As you can see, there is this continuous center line. You're gonna get a little bit better braking traction to dig in a little bit more. The big difference between this and the Aspen is the knob spacing. So there's actually quite a bit of space in here by comparison. So you can pretty much tell by looking at this that this is a wet conditions XC tire. Excellent analysis. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Compound is literally just the rubber that the tire is made out of. So as I was saying in 2015, we had a pretty cool opportunity to go to a factory in Bangkok that was making mountain bike tires. Essentially what they do is they extrude like a long strip of rubber that is the compound of choice for that tire. They smush that with the casing and the bead, and then they put it in a mold that essentially melts that tire into the shape of the tread. Very cool to see happen in person. And I think something to think about there is that this is why tire companies can change the compound much more easily than they can change the tread pattern, right? Because these molds are really expensive. So that's why they'll keep tread patterns for a very, very long time, but make advancements, say, with the compound, because that's something that is much easier to 
prototype and test because they're just like extruding this rubber. They just put something different in the machine and something else comes out and then they try it. I'm sure someone's like, it's a lot harder than that. Said, Come on. I think that's also why you can get different casings with the same tread because you just use a different casing. Mountain bike consumers or just tire consumers in general are hard to please. They want everything. They don't want it to flat. They want it to last forever but they also want to be able to stop when they want to. And sometimes it's kind of hard to accommodate all those things. Oh, and it must be light and roll fast. There's a lot of people that are smarter than me spending a lot of time thinking about how can we have a sticky compound still rolls well, still grips, doesn't wear out immediately. In an effort to please everyone, tire companies will put more than one compound into the rubber of a single tire, right? And so that's what we have with Maxxis's 3C. So this is the Asa guy again, back for another appearance. This, this is the Max Grip, which as you can imagine means it is going to be sticky and grippy. The 3C means there are three different compounds. Hardest rubber, essentially, so like the least sticky, least grippy is in this base, and that's just to provide stability for the whole situation. And so then your middle knobs have sort of a medium compound. It's going to be a stronger compound than what you have in the cornering knobs, and that's because we spend more time on these middle knobs. It's also where we break really hard, generally, hopefully. And then the cornering knobs are the softest, so the most grip, the most traction when you're in a corner. A lot of people have probably had the experience of having a tire where things do not wear evenly. It's a tire where the compound is the same for the whole, mm -hmm. and you don't use your cornering knobs nearly as much as you use your center knobs, so your center knobs are gonna wear out. Also, I'll be honest, a lot of people don't know how to use their cornering knobs at all, so if you have the experience of you never wear out your cornering knobs, you don't need a different tire, you need to do some skills coaching. <laughs> Shout out to Lee Likes Bikes for teaching us how to corner with our cornering knobs. So the next compound in the Maxxis line is the Max Terra. So this is a harder compound than the Max Grip, so it is going to roll a little bit better. It's gonna be a little less sticky. When people talk about like, oh, this tire doesn't roll well, it's sticky. That means they have, you know, they're pedaling a downhill tire uphill. We're big fans of the Forecaster. We're big fans of this sort of level of tire where you get good, I mean, here, look at it. Leave me a comment. Tell me what the Forecaster is gonna ride like. Oh, nice. This is a great tire for a trail bike or a down country. Down country bike. <laughs> the point is, this is a tire for a bike that you're going to be climbing, you're going to be descending, you're not going to the bike park, you're not doing anything totally insane, unless you're Mackie who did use this in an enduro race and won an enduro stage. Max Terra compound makes a lot of sense in like a trail tire. So the final tire, or final compound that we're going to talk about here, we're going to bring back the Aspen for an encore. And that is the Max Speed, and this is the newest compound. You'll notice that it's missing the 3C. Yes. That is significant. It is not 3C. So the Max Speed is Max's cross country compound, and this is the new Max Speed. So they used to do 3C for the XC tires as well. So basically the same concept that we were just talking about, but all harder rubber to roll faster. With the new Max Speed, they're not doing the 3C and they're adding silica, which you can't see it, but they've added silica into that. And I'm guessing that basically that helps with the traction piece, right? Cause there's tiny little silica widgets in there. I actually looked into this because I was also curious. Yeah. Car tires have been using silica for a long time. Cool. The reason silica works is because it has a faster rebound under high frequency and a slower rebound under low frequency. Sounds Did like you gobbledygook. see my eyes glaze, yeah. glaze no. over? <laughs> if you care, you should go Google it. But the basic idea is on lower like compressions, like rolling, it stays hard. And on wow. harder compressions, like hitting a rock or a root or like variations in the terrain, it compresses more. So that's how it's able to both roll well and provide more traction. So it's like the magic yeah. tire. Which is super cool. This is like, like I was saying earlier, this is the reason you see so much innovation in compounds is it's probably the easiest thing on the tire to just prototype and try. We have really enjoyed the max speed. We have a video on our other channel where we did a little test comparing it to the old max speed. It wasn't the most scientific test ever, but we did go faster, so that's good. <laughs> Okay, so now at this point we have gone over casing, 
feed, compound, tread, and you might be a little overwhelmed, but now is the point where you have all the information you need to choose the right tire for your riding conditions, your riding style, and possibly for any races or events you're doing. Instead of being super prescriptive here, we thought we would kind of walk you through our decisions for a couple big races we have done this year, because there is a lot of personal preference in this too. And that's why instead of just say, listing out, you know, you should use that Aspen if you're doing this, we wanted to do this video where you can kind of look at a tire and understand why. First one we want to talk about is a five day stage race that we did in Trans Andes. Quick pitch for our other channel, Sid and Mackie, which just hit 100,000 subscribers. You can watch videos about all these races that we're talking about over there. We do race style vlogs. If you want to see what these conditions look like, more than just the B-roll that we're going to pop up here, head over there, like, and subscribe. So this race was a five day cross country stage race in Chile. We flew down there with really no idea of what we were going to get weather wise. And we brought Maxis recon races and severes because there was rain on the forecast. However, when we were pre-rode, we realized that the terrain, it's, it's all volcanic sand essentially. So sand and rock. So we didn't feel like there was a huge need for the severe over the recon race. As you can see, we didn't talk about the recon race specifically earlier, but now you guys know by looking at this, that this is an XC tire. It has a little more profile than the Aspen. So it's a little more aggressive, a little bit better braking, cornering traction. These knobs are pretty darn close together. So it's not a mud tire at mm. all. So that's why we brought the severes as well. However, we ended up using the recon races. It rained quite a bit but I was still very happy with that decision because we never got mud. We did literally ride through a river for like an hour, <laughs> but this was fine. Like we still had, you know, as much traction as you're gonna have on an XC tire while riding through a river. The mud wasn't clumping to the tires. Exactly. It was just like, you know. It was just wet. It was just wet, yeah. yeah. It was wet, 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 wet very wet. wet. Which turns out the new max speed compound is excellent in the wet. It's better in the wet than the previous max speed, right? Because yeah. it has that silica and is a little bit grippier. We were super pleased with recon races for that. On our other YouTube channel, we get comments of people like, I would have wanted a DHR for that because it was the descent, but they forgot that we climbed for an hour on a paved road to get there, right? So that's XC tires, like there's always an element of compromise, but we were pretty happy with that decision. So the next event we want to talk about is the Revolution Enduro at Glorietta, which Mackie raced. I did not do this event, but I am going to talk about his tire choice. So he went with a forecaster in the front and a recon in the back. This was considered a very light tire setup for this race. However, he had his reasons for doing this, and that was because the first stage was very pedally, very flat, but mostly very fast. And Mackie made the gamble that he could basically not flat the forecaster because that was sort of the big concern there and that you would have enough braking traction for the more downhilly stages and that that stage was gonna be the longest and that was where the most time was to be had. So his tire choice was very personal for this event. It's not what really anyone else was running it was, I think, the best choice for him and his skill set because he was able to win that stage and bank some time. The other stages weren't as long and they weren't as much, you know, your style of riding, right? So that was the choice for that. So the, again, this is why we aren't being prescriptive here. We're not saying at Glorietta, one must run a forecaster. Like that's probably not the choice that most people would make. However, it made sense in a race environment. And I think most people trip. were running DHRs, actually, yeah. like DHR Asagai. Yeah. But I was like, I'd rather be able to roll really fast that first stage, make as much time as possible, and then just take it a little easier on the next two, or next whatever, three, four, and, and it, it worked. And you ended up on the podium, so which was your goal. The next event we want to talk about is Downeyville Classic, which is a super interesting race for just gear choice in general, because you have to ride the same bike for two days in a row for a long cross country race the first day and a very long downhill race the second day. I'm putting downhill in quotes because it isn't a traditional downhill race. There's still like 500 feet of climbing, but you drop 5,000. <laughs> so it's definitely kind of an old style super D, except it's not mass start, it is a time trial. Obviously a lot goes into tire choice for that 
kind of an event. You're always taking some risks. So Mackie actually ran the Maxis Aspens for this race, despite the fact that Downeyville is a very, very rough descent. He went with these not because of anything to do with the terrain necessarily, but because of how competitive the race was. And he knew the race was going to be won or lost on the long, long road climb in that cross country. So again, he made a gamble, super fast rolling tire, allowed him to finish seventh in the cross country. And then, I mean, honestly, I'm like kind of amazed you didn't fight the Aspen in the downhill, but he did the downhill in 44 minutes, which if you know Downeyville is really, really fast and was sixth in the downhill and fifth in the overall. I did run inserts, which helped on yes. the not flatting. So. That's a good point. Yeah, we uh, inserts, we're not talking about <laughs> inserts today. I'm sorry, there's just too much. This video would be like an hour and a half long. If you were just going to ride the Downeyville downhill, say if you did a shuttle, you would have made a different tire choice, you being Mackie, but also most yes. people would. So what tires would you choose for just a shuttle of John Downeyville? I think a Forecaster Recon, like what I raced at Glorietta, would be a really nice It'd combo. still be super fast, yeah, but you'd have a little more protection. Sh you've got some nice cornering knobs, you've got more braking traction, but you still have that continuous center line, so it rolls well. I, I think that would be a really nice front tire at Downeyville. Sometimes, and, the, and this is sort of just like a lesson in general for life and bikes, but like sometimes the most fun option is not the fastest option. <laughs> So the last race we want to talk about is Trans Madeira, which is a five day enduro stage race in Madeira. Madeira is a little island off the coast of Northern Africa. We just came back from Madeira. It was an insane experience and very different riding than what we do here in the Rocky Mountain Southwest. So very different. Very different. So we traveled to Madeira on our bikes. We had Asagai front and DHR rear, a really tried and true classic enduro trail bike combo. Like we had ridden these in our bike park here. A lot of fun, very sticky, very confidence inspiring. We did them both in max grip double down. Yes, max grip double down. Exactly, because you have to think about all these things. That's the point of this video. Yeah. We also brought with us double down max grip shorties in case it was muddy. So this was kind of a tricky tricky situation. First of all, our bikes got lost, so we didn't get to like pre-ride as much as we would have liked. We did rent bikes pre-ride on them. They had a tire that was most comparable, I would say, to a shorty, and we were both kind of like, uh, this is a little squirrely, because even though it was wet and muddy, it was pretty hard packed for large amounts of the descents. Yeah, very variable conditions. Yeah, and lots of rocks, roots, not much thick mud. So we decided to keep the Asagai DHR combo on. I was really, really happy with that. The more you understand about tire choice, the more you understand that you're always, it's always a little give and take. And I think we this did end up being the perfect tire choice for Madeira. It, it was also definitely the most common used tire combo. Like I saw so yeah, many people with so Asagai and DHR. People. So like we were not alone in that decision. Um, it's definitely one like had the heavens opened up and really, really, really rained, we might have regretted that decision if we had gotten really thick, clumpy yeah. mud. But as it was, we just got like light rains and wetness and we were really, really happy with that. Hopefully this answers your questions about what tires you should be riding. It's a pretty big topic though, so feel free to leave questions in the comments and we will try to get to them. At the end of the day, it really comes down to your goals. What kind of riding do you want to do? Are you racing? Are you trying to optimize for one specific race run or are you trying to optimize for versatility and longevity of the tire? So now you know what to look for and you're prepared. We are not going to do this in one minute. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>